I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Digi Remote Manager to commission six iX20s. By commission, I mean loading onto them the correct firmware and configuration settings, including configuration settings that need to be different in each iX20. The iX20s will form a star topology IPsec VPN network, but what does that mean? Here we see six iX20s connected to a cellular network. We also see a VPN appliance. Behind each router in this diagram, you will see that there is a local area network or an Ethernet network. Each network, as you can see, is on a different subnet. With the chosen IP addressing scheme, it is possible to connect up to 250 devices onto the Ethernet network behind each iX20. They need each to be able to communicate with the server behind the VPN appliance and be individually addressable by IP address. An IPsec VPN tunnel can be used to achieve this with the additional benefit of doing it securely. The star topology means that the iX20 builds a VPN tunnel to the VPN appliance and they do not build VPN tunnels directly to each other. You've probably heard the phrase zero touch provisioning before. This doesn't mean that you can't touch the router. Of course, someone has to install it and insert the SIM card, etc. But it does mean that no pre-configuration of the router is necessary. The engineer doing the installation can simply insert the SIM card, connect up the cables and antennas, and that's it. They don't need to worry about loading the correct firmware or configuration onto the router because that will occur automatically. The feature in Remote Manager to achieve this is called Configuration Manager and I'm going to show you how to set this up. The first step is to configure a single iX20 with the appropriate firmware and the configuration. Now you can do this locally over the web user interface or you can do this over Remote Manager. I'm currently connected over Remote Manager and I've already done this. The quickest way to show you that I've done this is from the command line. So I'll just go to the console here. And if I issue the command show IPsec, you can see that there is one tunnel that's already up. If I issue the command show config, this command shows me all of the changes that have been made from the factory default. And you can see there's a VPN tunnel configured, uh, but not much more. As a quick reminder of the topology, this master iX20 that I've configured here has a LAN behind it with 192.168 130.0 subnet and my computer here behind the VPN appliance has a subnet of 192.168.50.0. As I'm on my PC now, I should be able to ping the iX20 over the VPN tunnel. In addition, because the VPN tunnel is up, I should be able to access it via the web browser. And you can see that I can. The next step is to create a configuration profile. A configuration profile contains a complete record of a device configuration, firmware version, and also at any other special files like scripts. The configuration profile can be used to load the same configuration onto other devices. In this case, onto the other iX20Ws I want to commission onto my network. So I'll give it a name, configuration profile, iX20, I select a group that this configuration profile will apply to. So any units in this group will have the configuration profile applied to it. I need to select the device type and I need to select the firmware version I want to use. And the next screen, I get a choice. I can base a configuration on a configuration of an existing device or I can create the configuration in Remote Manager because Remote Manager understands all of the parameters settings for this firmware version as well. What I'll do in this case is I'll import it from a device because I've already created this device, iX20 Howarth Master, which has got 100% correct configuration on it. When building an IPsec LAN to LAN VPN tunnel, there are settings that have to be different on every router or every site. For example, the Ethernet IP address. Also, I really should have a different pre-shared key 
on each site if I'm not using certificates. So the next step is to tell Remote Manager which settings have to be different on every site. So as you can see, I've told Remote Manager that there are four parameters with values that need to be different on each router. So the next thing is to click on these three dots and download a CSV file to my computer and populate the CSV file with the values for all the different routers. So as you can see, I've done that now. Please note that at this stage I do not need to know which device will be going to which location or site. I simply give each device a name of my own choosing. I do not need to include the MAC address or the device ID of the router in the spreadsheet. You can see the names in this key value, column B here. For the site specific settings you can see that I have a column of Ethernet 2 IP addresses, virtual IP addresses, IPsec secrets and IPsec IDs. These are the only site specific settings I need to build my VPN network. The next step is to import this file into Digi Remote Manager. So again I click these three dots here and this time I click on upload. and I import the device overrides. Okay, that's done. So now I can click on continue. This is where I would specify any files that I need to be part of the configuration profile, such as scripts. In this case, I don't need any, so I click continue. This screen allows me to configure how frequently Remote Manager should check that all the devices in this configuration profile are correct. This is important to maintain the integrity of your network and ensure that all devices are compliant with your security policy. In the event of a mismatch, you see that I have the choice to create an alert and or remediate the device. As I'm using Configuration Manager to commission my routers, I need to ensure Remediate is enabled so that Remote Manager will make changes to the routers and configure them correctly when they first connect. I click Enable Scanning and Save. So the configuration profile is now set up. The commissioning or remediation of a device will occur as soon as the device with matching name is first added to Remote Manager or first moved into the group that the configuration profile is assigned to. This means, for example, I could import all devices without names in bulk and when an engineer is on site he could call a help desk and inform them that device with said MAC address is to be installed at said location and the help desk simply need to change the name of the device with that MAC address. Alternatively, you may know which device and therefore which MAC address are going to be installed at each location ahead of time. This is what I will demonstrate. The iX20s that are part of my VPN network are installed at different locations around Europe. They are therefore on different carriers on mobile networks. They are also running factory default configurations. They have all automatically determined the correct APN to use and have not been pre-configured. So this is true zero touch. I've prepared a CSV file here to import into Remote Manager. This contains the device ID, which comes from the MAC address, and also the install code. I also included two optional columns you may not always want at this stage. The name of the device, which will link it to the site-specific settings it should be configured with, and also the group, which will link it to the configuration profile we defined earlier. So I click the Add button here and select multiple devices, click Browse and select the file to import and then click Add Devices. Devices have been submitted, check the event log for status. I'll just refresh the screen here. Now you can see that all the devices have been imported. Remote Manager has not yet realised they're connected. It will take a few moments for this to happen. So now I'll click on a device at random, this iX20W Howarth, and click on Configuration Scan History. So 
So we can see new scan started. The device name is iX20W Howarth. Reason for the scan, it's device connected for the first time. And it checked the firmware, which was already compliant. And then it set, checked the settings on the configuration and found that there are a number of settings non-compliant. And it worked through these configuration settings until it had completed and it says the device is compliant, the device settings have been remediated. So this iX20 and all the others in my network have now been configured with the correct configuration, including their site-specific settings. So let's check that the VPN tunnels have all come up. My VPN appliance is actually a Digi TX64. If I go to status IPsec, I can see that all these tunnels I've configured are currently connected. Tunnel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So my network should now be working. From my PC here, I should be able to ping all of the iX20 routers on the appropriate private IP address over the VPN tunnel. And there we are, all working. If at some future point I want to make a configuration change to all the devices in my network, this is really easy. And there are three cases to consider. A configuration change that is the same on all routers, a configuration change to the value of existing site-specific settings, or the creation of a new site-specific setting or parameter. All of these can be achieved by going into the configuration menu here selecting the configuration profile, actions and edit. To make a change that's going to be the same on all routers, I go to settings here and then navigate through the menu that appears to find the configuration parameter I want to change. In this case, I'm going to go to services, iperf and enable iperf because I want to run a throughput test against all of my routers. Click Save. And the changes have now been applied to the profile. I can close the profile down. And I can just wait for the profile to run at its next pre-configured schedule. Or I can run the configuration profile straight away by clicking Scan Now. Yes, I'm sure. If I click on here, I can see the status. Now all of the routers are non-compliant, um, but it should be navigating through them and um, making them compliant. I'll click on one router here for some more detail. You see that the device has now been made compliant and the non-compliant setting was iPerf, so it's enabled iPerf for me. So I've just now made a configuration change on all of these six sites to enable iPerf. Similarly, if I want to make a configuration change to the site specific, I just go into the configuration here and edit it. And on the settings tab here, I would, if necessary, define a new site specific setting. But if you only need to make changes to existing site specific settings, you can skip that step. Either way, you then click on the three dots here and download and upload a new CSV file which contains all of your site specific settings and then you can click on save and roll that change out just the same way you saw me do earlier. So it's just as easy to make configurations that are different on each router as it is to make configuration changes that are the same on each router. I want to finish by mentioning that configuration manager is also a key security feature. It allows administrators to prove that all devices are compliant with the security policy, which means the configuration in the firmware is 100% correct. We all know that engineers need to tweak settings when troubleshooting and sometimes they can be forgotten to be put back. Configuration Manager detects accidental or malicious changes to the configuration or firmware and as well as creating an alert to notify can automatically remediate the device correcting the configuration or firmware version discrepancy.
As you've seen, it can also be used to roll out either configuration or firmware changes which may be needed to install a security patch. These three points make the Configuration Manager feature an important part of the DigiTrust Fence security solution.